I get it, I get it. But I'll stir you up if I won't do anything else. I'd just love to see you. Get back at me. Yeah, come Wednesday, I'll show him. <laughs> Prove me wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a ploy. It's a tactic, but we'll see if it works. Zechariah chapter number 2, verse 1, I lifted up my eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. And then said I, Whither goest you? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof, and the width, and what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him, and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. Listen to that. As towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. Now, now pay attention, because when God starts mentioning cattle, he's talking about prosperity. So he's talking about the multitude of men, which is men in the kingdom, and cattle are prosperity. Are you listening to me? Okay. I know people get uncomfortable when preachers talk about money. But if you don't have none, you can't pay your electric bill. Oh, preacher, I don't care anything about that filthy lucre. Okay. So since you don't care anything about it, you still need a job. You ought to go to work and just give it all to the kingdom. Oh, you need some. Okay. All right, I'm with you now. For I saith the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire about her and will be the glory in the midst of her. Now this is interesting. In the King James, it says ho, ho. Yeah. I, I do not know because I looked it up and that's nearly not what it says. So maybe it was Christmas when they were doing this. I don't know. but It's really hey, hey, or, or pay attention, pay attention. Is really what it is. Come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, after. This is good. After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. Now, now. He's making a declaration, the Lord sent me. For he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. He that, puts, he that lays a hand on you touches the apple of God's eye. The Hebrew there is talking about literally the center part of God's eye right here. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them. And they shall be a spoil to their servants, and you shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of them. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto thee. There it is again. God sent me. The Lord sent me. And the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. I want to talk to you just for a little while, just a simple thought, something you hear me pray around here all the time, a wall of fire a wall of fire. Father, I thank you so much for your anointing, for your spirit. Lord, nobody knows like I know how inadequate I am to do this job. I get that. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> if you don't do it, Lord, it never gets done. So I'm asking this morning that you speak through me and that you allow me to say what you want me to say and for every good thing that happens in this house, I will give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.
sometimes I try to tell you how things come about this week. The way my week goes every week when it comes to preaching at least, Sunday after I get through, Sunday morning after I get through, I take a break and Sunday afternoon and I take a nap. Whew. Somebody say amen for Sunday afternoon naps. Amen. amen. We... <laughs> Oh, I can already see how this is going to go. So, so we, then Monday, a lot of times on Monday, I don't think too much about, it's kind of like the day that I just do something else. Don't think too much about it. But by Monday night or Tuesday at least, I begin to think about what I'm going to preach next Sunday. Okay, so it never never completely leaves my mind, but the reality is, is that that's when I start really paying attention to things, unless God just speaks something, and on occasion He will. I mean, I've been out many times eating Sunday afternoon, and God, you know, show me something that's going to be in the message next week, but usually that's the way that it works, and in the process with me, is, and I've shared this before, is that I just, I read stuff, I try to, every single day, I try to read, you should try that, it, will, it won't hurt you any. And if you can't, if I don't have time to read, then you better find time to read your Bible, okay? You should do that always. Are you listening? And it wouldn't hurt, it wouldn't hurt at all to pop in somebody's preaching a couple times a week. It wouldn't hurt you at all to make sure you've got some worship music in your car or your truck or whatever, because those are the times where God can speak to you if you'll be listening. Amen. So that's the process for me. And I just began to, and, and, and it just depends. People send me all kinds of stuff, send me YouTube videos and different kinds of stuff. The ones I can get to that, that look interesting to me or if God triggers something in me, then I play them, I listen to them. And, and usually as the week goes along, things will begin to develop and I'll see, I'll get confirmation from different places, different things on what I'm supposed to preach come Sunday morning. This week was the same Except for usually that narrows down to a basic subject or topic come Saturday. And this week, that's not what happened. It began the week by, and, and, and I just felt this in my spirit, actually Monday night. And I began, and I was thinking about the protection. Now, now granted, I'm a human being. You're a human being. I preached last Sunday morning about this coronavirus thing. And just to be honest with you, that maybe that was on my mind. I don't know. But I began to Sunday night and Monday begin to think about the protective hedge of God. Are you listening? Because there are people who believe you don't have one, that in the natural or in the physical, you're just out here just winging it, and God will, you know, God spiritually has you covered, but he doesn't physically have you covered. Well, let me tell you something. There's no God like that in your Bible. Are you listening? Well, how about bad things happen to good people? Yes, they do. On occasion, that's right. The Bible, Jesus said, you'll go through trouble or you'll go through trial. You, in this world, you have, will have tribulation. But those are specific events, anecdotal accounts of people that go through something so that God can do something in their life. It's the old adage, you cannot have a testimony if you don't have a test. Are you listening? There's nothing to be thankful for if you have everything you want all the time. So you understand then that sometimes God puts you through a process where you don't have everything so that you'll be more thankful when God finally shows up and gets you out of the mess you're in. And so this was... I began to think about that in God, and there was different, a couple of different videos sent to me. And usually they're just a little short YouTube stuff, and, and I appreciate all. Now, if I don't get to everything you send me, please don't be offended. I get a lot of them, okay? So I listen to the, the, as much as I can or whatever, because these things don't just track, uh, don't just give ideas. They track in the spirit, and you can pick up on those things. Are you listening? So you begin to see that the spirit of God is speaking something through many, many voices. It's like the voice of many waters are doing something. So protection was what was at the beginning. And then somewhere towards the middle of the week, something popped up on one of my, on one of my feeds, actually, that I, that are, are, um, a deal that I watched that I have a pop-up on my phone, and it was about the favor of God. And I thought, okay, we're changing directions. 
Now, not totally. Obviously, protection and favor has something to do with each other, but it's still, I can just tell you, I can preach two hours on favor. I can preach a couple hours on protection. I, can, I mean, it, it, so I can't, I, I can't cover all the bases. Are you with me in one sermon? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, God, maybe we're switching here. We're switching to favor. As the end of the week came along on, on Thursday night, I believe it was, something else popped up, and, and, and it, it was just about God's coverage of our children. Basically, that God has promised our children as an inheritance, and that he, that he has promised that if we, if we raise them up the way we're supposed to, when they're older, they won't depart from it. And so, I, I, I began to look at that. Well, sometime Friday, I was, we were sent a song, and it was about favor on, I, I, I think, um, what, was, what was that song? No, just uh -huh. the blessing, the blessing. Has anybody heard it? Yeah. You should look it up. Amen. Carrie Joe was singing, at least singing it in this particular, uh, in this particular, and so, uh, yeah, and I know, you know, demons are coming because you're singing Bethel songs, but we got, <laughs> yeah, I'm making fun of them. That's stupidity. It's ridiculous to shoot under the, your own tent. Are you listening? It's, it's just it's, it's a waste of time. So I began to look at this, and I thought, okay, well, now we're, now we're dealing with, with, with inheritance. We're dealing with our children. And so I'm thinking, all right, Lord, which one am I going to? Because I got all this information, and I've been collecting it all week long, and I'm, I got good stuff on protection, I got good stuff on favor, and I got good stuff on our children. And all of a sudden, last night, I'm going, because listen, I, I, I'm just telling you, sometimes it's frustrating to not have any idea what you're going to preach on Sunday morning until Sunday morning. Now, I know that sounds like poor planning, but I'm telling you, I plan. It's just that for whatever reason, God, <laughs> and, and maybe it's that, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just the way I'm made up. he got to keep me in line that way. I don't know. But he, but, he, but he rarely tells me a year ahead of time what to preach. Are you listening? And so I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure this out. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Now, listen, I don't know how he talks to you, but sometimes it's, it's like... Um, he talks to me the way I talk. Does that make sense? He speaks to me the way I speak to people. And it was just like the Spirit of God said, duh. You don't have to be rude. I'm really trying to seek you here. And it's like, it's like God said, Todd. What is the order of protection, favor, and family? And I said, I got it, Lord. That's the prayer I pray every Sunday morning. Are you listening? And so I begin to run through my mind. When you leave here with God's help this morning, I'll pray the same prayer. I've been praying now for 14 and a half years over you. Lord, be a wall of fire around them, a hedge about them. Send your angels on assignment to protect them. Show them favor. Show them favor in the marketplace. Show them favor in their jobs. Show them favor in their finances. Show them favor when they go to the doctor and get back a report. Show them favor. And Lord, keep our families together. Protect them. Surround them. God, we claim every child, every grandchild, every great-grandchild for your kingdom. They belong to us. And so I'm like, okay, God, well, I can't preach on all of that. And he said, no, but start with the first one. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, let me give you a little bit of history, and I'll try not to take it long because I'm, I've got a bunch of points, but I think they're quick points. I don't know that for sure, but I think they are. <laughs> um, this, the wall of fire thing came into my life in 1988. 
Those of you that have been going here very long probably heard this before, but I got away from God. I ran from God, and I won't go through my whole testimony. Many of you have heard it, but for a long time, uh, and then I came back to God in 1998, or 1988, I'm sorry. I was 21 years old in 1988. I'd been seeking God about some stuff. I'd never had him directly talk to me, in other words, prophesy over me. I grew up in a Pentecostal church, but that I remember at least, I don't remember anybody ever prophesying directly over me. Now, there were there were, you know, people would say he's going to, you know, he's anointed or he's called of God or stuff like that. But, you know, as a child, that didn't mean much to me. I didn't really understand much of it. And in this particular case, I'd written down a list of five things. I remember trying to decide. I knew God was real. I just didn't know if Pentecost was real. And you say, how do you know? How do you not know if Pentecost was real? You talked about seeing miracles. I did see miracles. I'm not talking about miracle work in God. I'm telling you, I wasn't sure, and just let's be honest about it, if the speaking in tongues thing had to be a part of it. I know AG preachers ain't supposed to talk like that. But you better listen to me because if you're not real with people, people get confused and they just quit. Amen? And so I was trying to figure it out. I'm just like, Lord, you know, if this is the way you work, I'm in. If it's not the way you work, I don't want to have any part of it. Amen? I know you're powerful. I know you do supernatural things, but I don't know exactly how your process works. I know what I was taught, but I don't want to try to live out my life on mom and dad's religion. I want to have an experience of my own. And that's what I pray. So I write down these five different the different questions. I wrote them down on a list. I put them in my Bible. I took them to church with me. And that night, church was over. We went through the whole process. Church was over. I was about to leave and very disappointed because nothing had happened. Okay? I fasted. That was my first fast ever in my life. I fasted Monday through Wednesday. Nothing but bread and water. And I'm going to tell you something. For a 21-year-old who's used to eating a lot of meat, it was a real fast. I'll tell you, Pastor Hagee told me the first time I met him, I was asking, uh, Randy said something about it. I said, Pastor, looks like you've lost a little bit of weight. And he said, oh, it's this stupid fast I'm on. <laughs> and he said, what? what's wrong with the fast? He said, oh, they told me if you didn't do anything but drink water for the first three days, you wouldn't even be hungry by the middle of the week. He said, that's the biggest lie I ever heard. So by the time the middle of the week came, I could eat a festered skunk, he said. The kind of fast I was on. I'm just telling you, that's what it felt like. You know, where you feel like the, the front is, some, is smacking against your spine. Yeah. And so I thought I did something pretty big. Are you listening? I mean, I'd gotten pretty spiritual real fast. I'd never done anything like that before. And I go to church and no answers. So... I'm about to leave, and I've shared this many times, and I know, she, I know she didn't like me to call her out, but I'm going to anyway, that lady right there. Sister Oma came to me. I was, I'd stood up. I was fixing to leave. I was on the back row of the church, and she, 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 said, Young, she said, God sent me here to tell you something. I need you to sit and listen. And I sat back down, and she began to prophesy over me, and she answered all five questions verbatim in the order I wrote them on the list. Okay, that's, that's a supernatural God. Don't you think for a second this thing ain't real. That's a supernatural God. Amen? In that process, when she got through, she, she prophesied over me, and I, and I don't remember every word of that prophecy. Obviously, it's been a long, long time ago, but I do remember this specifically. I will go before, wherever you go, I will go before you. I will be a wall of fire around you, and my glory will be in your midst. I've never forgot it. It changed my life. It changed the direction of my life. It changed my life. And so when we went in on the evangelistic field in 1999, we named our ministry Wall of Fire Ministries because of that. And I can tell you now here, 20 late years later, 21 years later, I'm declaring to you that God has consistently and constantly been a wall of fire around me, and his glory is always with me. Now, I didn't tell you that to brag on me because I'm telling you that God is no respecter of person. And so, just like I told you earlier, if you're in the will of God, God is for you and he is with you and he's always going to be with you. Amen? 
So let's look at this real quick, and I'll go just as quickly as I can. It's already 12. Well, you ain't used to getting You'll be all right. <laughs> we, the first thing that shows up in Zechariah's vision is this. It shows a surveyor of all things. It's the first thing that comes, a surveyor. And when he shows up, the, the word of the Lord to the surveyor is that you go measure Jerusalem. And he says, I have come to measure the width of it, the breadth of it, the length of it. And, 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 and he makes that declaration. And then he exits the picture, and we never get any measurements. Do you, do you <laughs> think, think about it for just a minute. I'm thirsty. Surveyor is there to set boundaries. You know what a surveyor does if he surveys your property, you get it, you understand it, right? It says this line on this side is yours, that side is not yours, it belongs to somebody else. So the surveyor came and surveyed, now listen to me, Jerusalem, um, the prophecy, the vision that Zechariah had cannot just be for Jerusalem or the, Israel, uh, or, or the Hebrew children in, of antiquity. And I'll tell you why, because this says that it will have no walls and that it will be because of the, of the, of the abundance of people and cattle that will have no walls, yet just a, just a little while later, God instructs Nehemiah to rebuild the wall. Are you listening? Okay. So this is... This is this is a prophetic word. Yes, it certainly gives encouragement to Israel of that day, but it is a prophetic word to the church. Are you listening? So the surveyor comes and surveys the church. He comes and surveys Jerusalem, and when he's done, he walks away, and he doesn't lay out any boundaries. Why would he do that? Because there's no limit to what God will do in the kingdom. He says, he's declaring, church, listen to me. He'll declare, I, I am so tired of listening to, to religious Oh, God, help me, Lord Jesus. Religious hierarchy who say, well, that's off limits, and this is off limits, and you can't say that homosexuality is wrong or you're not going to be able to win anybody, and you can't say this is sin or you're not going to be able to win anybody, and you can't go into that place because you can't get it. Listen to me. There is no boundaries. People are looking for the truth. They are looking for somebody to show up and deliver them, and the only way that's going to happen is if we take this word outside of these four walls and be begin to do something with it, begin to declare the word of the Lord with it. Church, I am telling you, there's no boundaries when it comes to God. There's no limit when it comes to God. The kingdom of the Lord, the government shall be upon his shoulders and of his government there shall be no end. No end. There's no boundaries. Now listen, I don't know about you, but when I'm reading it and I see there's no numbers, I'm like, well, that's got to mean something. See, because God doesn't write. <laughs> you ever watch those movies where they'll bring up a subject and then they never really address it and the movie's over and you're like, what? <laughs> it's like the writer, you know, that wrote the play. He's sitting there and he's doing like this. He's like, bird? Oh, oh. He come, and he missed. God doesn't write like that, church. When he puts something in there, it means something. He has a survey show up, a surveyor show up, and survey, and doesn't give you numbers because he's telling you it's going to enlarge to the point Jerusalem's going to spread all over the world. Amen? <laughs> Got to hurry. That's point one of nine. And then it goes off. Oh, this is good. Second character. The angels show up. So, surveyor's out of the picture. He never shows back up again. We don't know where he goes, so he served his purpose. And then the angels show up, and the Lord speaks to Zechariah and said, run after him and get to the information he's got. In other words, don't just stand there, but go after him. I'm going to tell you something because it's not exactly the picture that was painted when I grew in, in, in my raising when it came to um, um, Pentecost especially, but God is always looking to bring you a word. 
of good news. Say, well, he, he, he's never harsh about anything. Well, listen, if, if you rebel, he is. I mean, he, he'll come and tell you, and I like, I've said it like this so, for so many years, I don't know, maybe it's, we need to put it on a bumper sticker. If you're going to act like a knothead, God's going to treat you like a knothead. Amen? It's just that simple. If you're going to just straight up rebel against God, guess what? You're going to have to deal with it. Oh, but God's so merciful, he'll even get it. Yeah, he'll get you out, but I promise you, sin brings retribution. It always does. And yes, thank God he's so merciful, he certainly does lighten the load a lot of times, even when we get our own self in trouble. That's right. But you can't run around being mad at God when you're the one who got yourself into trouble. Amen? So he says, go chase after him. Get the message he's got. And what's so powerful is that the angel of the Lord has the message of God. The, the, the second angel is called um, the, the angel of the Lord or the messenger of God. Okay? So he's bringing a message. The message is, guess what? You've been carried off to Babylon. You've been serving somebody else. But I am about to show up and become a wall of fire around you and the glory in your midst. Amen? It's powerful. Now, when I pray for you or pray over you, I always ask you, God, God Lord, send angels on assignment. And you listen to me. I'm, I, I don't do a lot of teaching or preaching on angels because the danger in that is that people will start to worship angels or at least look to them for more than what they are. Okay? Because an angel is nothing but a created being created by God to do his will. Are you with me? They're not to be worshipped. Are you listening? They're not to be sought after. Are you listening? You seek the Creator. You seek God. You seek Jesus Christ, and everything else gets added to you. Amen? So I'm, I, don't, I don't do it a lot. However, I want you to understand that God does use angels on assignment. There is no doubt that He sends them, and I've told you this many times. But listen, I, I've watched... So many situations that should have turned out bad turn out good because I know for fact that angelic beings showed up and changed it. Amen? If I go around here and ask you, most of you can give me a story of either spiritually something angelic you saw or somebody that came into your life and left. You didn't ever see them before. I, don't, I can't even tell you. I could write a book on all the different times somebody has said, I never seen that person before. I never met that person before. They showed up, helped me change a flat or helped me, gave me some gas, whatever, and just walked out of my life. I have no idea. Well, I got an idea. Well, I'm telling you that God God is on your side. And if you, mm, if you are serving God, if you are covered in the blood of the Lord and you are listening to the voice of God, church, you can depend on God showing up when you need him to show up. You can depend on God coming to your aid when you need him the most because that's what, if God be for me, who can be against me? He said, I will be with you always. I'll stick with you closer than a brother. Church, there is nothing the enemy can do to remove God's hand from you. And we run around thinking somehow the devil's got the upper hand. He does not have the upper hand. He's no, he's no match for the God you serve.